Acts chapter 8, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria has accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers where they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, this is so interesting that they had own, see that these are believers. They only, um, they simply been baptized in the name of Jesus. They've been water baptized, but the Holy Spirit is not upon them. So Peter and John came to these new converts in Samaria to lay hands on them um, so that they may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, this cannot be prescriptive. This is descriptive. So, once you believed in Christ Jesus and confess He's the Lord, automatically, automatic, automatically you, you receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came upon them. Even Pentecostal can agree with that. Now, Carson's commentary is helpful. The delay of the Holy Spirit is surprising considering the more common pattern in Acts is an immediate receiving the Spirit upon belief. While some claim that the Samaritan's faith was inadequate, blah, blah, blah. That's not right. A better explanation is God delayed giving the Spirit for the sake of Christian unity. What unity are you talking about? To confirm the Samaritans they were one with the Jerusalem church. So that, that kind of makes sense because Samar Samaritans is not from Jerusalem. They are, they are diaspora of uh, Jewish, I suppose. And they are not from the Jerusalem core group. The gospel is going out now. And God wants to show the, uh, to Jerusalem church that Samaritan received the Holy Spirit through laying hands of the recognized and respected and honored leadership, Peter and John, the two top apostles. Um, so, so that they can connect the church back to Jerusalem. It's really one church, not two churches. That's what I say. Number two is to confirm to the Jerusalem church that Samaritans were indeed saved. So, you know, for the Jerusalem Jews, they were thinking, they are saved, but they are Samaritans. <laughs> so that's why God used that uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit upon the laying of hands of the top apostles from Jerusalem in Samaria for the Sam Samaritan Christians. So that would seal the deal. So the, the folks in Jerusalem have no question because they got filled by their by their top apostles. So there's no question. So the period of Acts is a time of transition and the book's purpose is to show the gospel's relentless advance, not to establish normative patterns for Christian life and polity. Now this is uh, good. I love the word, the gospel's relentless advance. So what, what it's saying is, God definitely has to advance the gospel fast. Because this is the first church. It has to set a pattern, a momentum for the rest of the world. The first church was so phenomenal. And like us today, we, we struggle to plant a church. We can't find 20 people to start a church. Can you believe that? Over there, it grows like mushrooms. Why? Because, because mainly, I would argue, because they perform signs and wonders. People see the signs and wonders are drawn to them. And today, we hardly do any signs of wonders. Our warfare has shifted to the paradigm of intellectual, emotional, rather than physical healings. The signs of wonders that Philip did, Peter did, Paul did, Stephen did, were all physical healing, visible, tangible, seeable. But today, we're indeed in a very, very different world. 
Yes, indeed, the warfare has shifted to the paradigm thinking, to the intellectual world. I would say that our warfare now, these days, is on two realms, intellectual and physical. And that's what we need to do. You know, gospel relentless events. And that can even give a variety of the giving of the Holy Spirit, surprisingly. They already been saved and even water baptized and they still don't have the Holy Spirit. Go figure, this is an exception. This cannot be the normative. So Carson's arguing, which I like, is, is the gospel relentless advance in the early church. It's, a, it's a not a normative pattern. So the lesson we can learn is that God is advancing very, very strongly, aggressively in the early church. And that we can learn something from that. And think about our, our situation now. And pray for God to advance. Advance, advance uh, the gospel in our days and time. Amen.